and welcome to Jazz Club. Nice. <laughs> the jazz world was rocked, or rather jazz, to its very core this week by the death of Smoke Staxman. Better known in jazz circles, of course, as Trevor Worthington. <laughs> Tragedy. <laughs> Trevor's early jazz career was undistinguished, but following his conversion to being a Belgian, he recorded a series of groundbreaking <laughs> albums. Yowza. Such as Don't Stick Your Finger in the Soup, Sister, if the soup's still on the boil. And Don't Stick Your Finger in the Sister, Mister, if the sister's not on the boil. And of course, Don't Stick Your Finger in the Boil if Mister's still on the Sister. Brother. <laughs> His death is a great loss to the world of jazz. Goodbye, Trevor. Blow your horn and enjoy that big jam in the sky. So much for dead jazz. Now on to living jazz. The jazz of today. Contemporary. <laughs> or should I say, the jazz of tomorrow. Dot com. <laughs> As I introduce you to a dot combo who go by the unusual name of the Boxwell Heath Archery Club. Let's go meet them. Excuse me, cats. Ah, wow. Look at those uh, bows. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you. So... The Boxwell Heath Archery Club. How did you come by such a distinctive name? Because we're an archery club from Boxwell Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Humorous. So, would you say then that you play an innovative blend of jazz and archery? I suppose so. Um, minus the jazz bit. <laughs> so you're just saying you're an archery club then? Yes, we're just an archery club. <laughs> so you're just an arch? Yes. So what are you doing here? Well, I'm as bemused as you, Louis. I mean, when we arrived, the fellow who was setting up, <laughs> he, uh, he said, just fire your arrows at the instruments there. It'll make as much sense as most of the rubbish we have on here. <laughs> oh, good, oh. Right, well, what are you going to play for us, guys? I don't know. We th thought we'd make it up as we went along. Great. <laughs> so... Here they are then, the Boxwell Heath Archery Club with their own composition. An improvisation around the theme of target practice. So, guys, fire away. Two. Okay. Welcome to Jazz Club. Nice. <laughs> the world is full of many languages, like French and, uh, and English. <laughs> but the language of jazz speaks to all. Biblical. <laughs> Tonight, we are the General Council of the United Nations of Jazz. In part two, we've got Finnish jazz. Brrr. <laughs> Crazy Trio, Toy Keat, are our Nordic Nopemeisters, and they'll be playing their track... Van Ho, Japoika, this is the character. Nice. But first, we're jetting off to Cuba. Embargo. <laughs> it's the sound of Dr. Howe playing a track from their album, Retardis. Preposterous. <laughs> Watch out for King Charles VII on tenor sax. This is a diabolical liberty. This is the third band this week. They've come all the way from bloody Cuba. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Um, this is Rory Fennick, stunt arranger. Hello. Hi. And this is Chip Cobb, the actual stuntman. Chip Cobb, stuntman. Great. <laughs> Hi there, Chip. 
Uh, this is Brian French, the actor you're doubling. I don't need a ladder. And Belinda, my assistant. When we get down the set, I'll walk you through the shot, but basically it's a bar scene. There's a fight, an argument. We need you to swap with Brian when he gets hit over the head with a chair. Anything you need, go through it with Belinda. Go for the window. All right. <laughs> I'm finding the right school really can be a nightmare, can't it? God, you're so detached from reality. Come on! Let's talk about football, right? Now, did any of you watch Match of the Day on Saturday? No. No, God. So, gin and tonic? Uh, two gin and tonics. What do you want to drink, Rob? No, 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 no. It's all right. I'll get the drinks. I'm going over here to talk to the lads. <laughs> Hi there! Hello. You talking about football? No. It's great, isn't it? Great football. Oh, I love the Arsenal, do you? No. You're, you're Spurs supporters? Mm. No, no. Oh, you, you, you're our small enemy. Come on, the Arsenal. Oh, I love it. I've got there every week, sit in the same place. Where are you going in, mate? North Bank. What? North Bank. No, I've got a seat <laughs> with a really good view, but not as good as the one I had at Manchester United. Hey? It, oh, I used to support Manchester United, but the, they weren't doing as well, so I moved to Arsenal. And now they're doing really well, and they wear red, which is really good. I like red. You see the game Wednesday? Brilliant. Did I see the game? Oh, I couldn't actually get to the match. Uh, I had some friends round for, for dinner, but uh, I saw a couple of goals on the news. Mm, it's on the edge of my seat. <laughs> do you reckon he's right to go to the flat back four? And what do you think for Chelsea? Do you think you should revert the sweeper and pack the midfield? What do you think? <laughs> What are the schools like in, in your area? <laughs> Good day. And welcome to That's Amazing with me, Carl Hooper. What would you do if you were walking down the road one night and you came face to face with a monster? <laughs> That's right, a terrifying monster. Well, Dick Wellington here did just that. He came face to face with his wife. No. <laughs> so, tell us about your monster, Dick. I'm <laughs> Your monster, Dick. <laughs> What's that, mate? All right. Well, Cal, I live in Arnhem Land in northern Australia, and it's uh, an area held sacred by the Aborigines. It's a mystical area, and some people even say it might be haunted, you know? Shut up, There's... mate. Just tell us about your monster, will you? <laughs> That's all right. Well, one night I was walking back from the pub, and there it was blocking my path. I recognised it instantly. It was the Bew Bew Goi Goi, which is an Aboriginal half spirit, half snake, half man bird. Right. <laughs> Did it have huge fangs? Yeah. And big claws? Yeah. And what colour was it, mate? Ah, uh, that's sad to say. It was invisible. <laughs> invisible? Mm. But you just said that huge fangs and claws. Yeah, that was a guess. <laughs> so how did you know it was there? Oh, but the unearthly sound. Like a terrifying roar? Ah, no, terrifying silence. <laughs> so you saw and heard an invisible and silent monster. Yeah, that was, that's right. I was ab absolutely terrified. I've been on medication ever since. <laughs> but let me get this straight. How did you know it was there? Did it leave a huge imprint in the ground? No, mate. No, no imprint. It was hovering. <laughs> yeah, do me a favour. Now, what's that, mate? Get off my show. <laughs> now? Now. Oh. I've taken a picture. It's really spooky. You can't see a damn thing, look. <laughs> I bet you can. Will you get off my show, please? Like now? Next week on the show, we're going to... Make a recording. <laughs> Get off my show! They exist, they're out there, there's other people no. out there! Uh. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Jazz Club. Great. <laughs> really great. <laughs> on the show today, Jackson Jeffrey Jackson. Surely the most innovative force in modern jazz trumpet styling. Nice. <laughs> Hello, Jackson, and welcome to Jazz Club. Hello. There you go. <laughs> mm. Now, tell us, Jackson, what's so special about your approach to jazz? See what I'm saying, Louis, in the way that I play. I play like, you know, the B-flat trumpet. She blows a major second below to start out, but with what you might say, the standard style. Mm -hmm. See, what I'm saying is, you take the key of C. Yeah. You got the parcels of the note C there. That's your harmonic series. But that's all you got, man. That's all you got. And you got the C, E, F. You got the notes. <laughs> that's all you got, see? 
You can run up, you can run down, but you can't run sideways. You can't run from the law, Louis Baby. You see what I'm saying? Not me. I'm outside the law. See, what I'm saying is, you got exhalation and you got inhalation. But they're two different things, man. You screw up, you got mutilation. You see what I'm saying? Mmm. <laughs> I, I, I sorry to, to sum it all up, Jackson. But I don't blow, I suck. <laughs> Great. So here's Jackson, Jeffrey Jackson with. Uh, what are you going to play for us today, Jackson? Trumpet. <laughs> uh, 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 what tune? Tune? This is jazz. <laughs> Great. Well, inhale away. Jackson. Jeffrey Jackson. Let's take a break from uh, all this chat and have a little light relief. Fifteen years ago, I was on a whole season's holiday in Bournemouth and I went to the summer cabaret. It was pretty mediocre. Then one man came on and raised the roof. He made me laugh quite literally like a drain. After the show, I went backstage <laughs> and I said to him, I'm Alan Partridge. If I ever get my own TV series, I promise to give you a big break. Remember, this is 15 years ago. Well, tonight I intend to honour that pledge by introducing a very special entertainer. Hold on to your sides, they might just split, <laughs> as I welcome on Joe Beasley and Cheeky Monkey. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name's Joe Beasley, and hey, this is Cheeky Monkey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, it's a great privilege to be here on the Alan Partridge Show, knowing me, knowing you. And I was thinking to myself in the dressing room, that's an Abbas song, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? So here's a little joke, right? What do you get if you cross Fred Flintstone? Uh, no, not what if you cross. Uh, what do you, what do you get if you, um, what does a Swedish, what does a Swedish Fred Flintstone say? Yabba dabba do! No, he says, oh, abba dabba do! <laughs> abba dabba do, that's what he says. <laughs> um, so then, uh, hey, oh, other week, pack it in you. The other week, <laughs> stop it. The other week, me and Cheeky Monkey, we went to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, right? And at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I don't know if you know this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but you've got the biggest roller coaster in the world. It's massive, isn't it? And we went up the big, up, up the big dipper. Oh, God. <laughs> we went up the big dipper. And uh, we're on the Big Dipper, right? And we're going about 200 mi miles an hour. 200 miles an hour on, on, the, on the Big Dipper. And um, we go on the Big Dipper, right? And we come round the corner. And Cheeky Monkey, right? He... <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> we get, we're on the Big Dipper, right? No. That... Oh, you Cheeky Monkey. He's made me forget. <laughs> it's his fault, ladies and gentlemen. He's made me forget. He made... Oh, he... Oh, he's always doing that, ladies and gentlemen. Forget, forget, forget the joke there. Cheek, cheek, cheeky monkey. Cheeky, cheeky monkey. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Beasley cheek, and Cheeky cheek. Monkey. Thank you. Well done. Joe, I think you've been... I think you've been, uh, I think you've been very brave. There's more jokes, That's, Alan. There's plenty I, I, it's, more. It's, it's fine. It's just a little mistake. I don't think, I don't think it's working. Just a little mistake. <laughs> I should, should apologise to Cheeky Monkey. Look, he's, he's, he's upset. Look, not real. You've upset. Oh, look, he's upset him, ladies and gentlemen. It's not real. Don't touch it! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've got a big problem. <laughs> If you've got any sense of dignity, this is well, your act is your act is really poor. You, 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 if you've got any sense of dignity, you'll leave the stage. I'll make sure you get a round of applause. Now, come on, quick while you're ahead. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Joe Beasley and Cheeky Monkey. <laughs> yep. So, Chip, you run to the edge of the roof. There's a shot. You clutch your chest, and then you fall. 
Who do I shoot? No, you get shot. OK, right, yeah. No, uh, I'm not happy about this, Peter. Uh, the stunts are than we arranged. I've asked my bloke to deflate that bag. It's way too small. Need a larger bag in there. It's going to cost more money, but I've got to think about the safety. OK. Oh, right. Uh, well, it's lunchtime anyway, sir. So Sorry. So. OK. Your tip, uh, like, it's lunchtime now, so, um, could you stand down? Cos we need to replace the bag with a bigger bag. And, uh, go and check your makeup with Ruth. Shook myself off the roof? <laughs> All right. <laughs> A welcome once again to English Country Cookie. Now, one of the things that's constantly amazed me in this series has been the range of locally grown ingredients. And today we'll be looking at herbs. Gavin. Thank you, Leslie. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to have a fair few little plants in this very simple English chicken stew. Now, the first one here is rosemary, and she's a difficult little one to grow. She's very difficult. Uh, she likes a bit of shade, so uh, I put her up against the wall. She likes it. Uh, she likes it up against the wall. <laughs> And that one's time, isn't it? Oh, that's right. This is time, yes. She's a wild little tearaway plant. You, you have to keep her in check, you know. You have to be very firm with her. Very firm. She understands that. And the this firm, one? The firmness. Yes. Oh, now, that's marjoram. That, she's a pretty little thing, isn't she? And look at the little head bobbing there like that. <laughs> now, you can always recognise marjoram by this sort of little green fringe in here. It's almost like... You were wearing a little dress, isn't it? <laughs> a tight little skirt. <laughs> skirt. Right, yes. And uh, what are we going to be doing with all these lovely aromatic herbs? My mouth's watering already. Oh, yes, that's what they do to you, isn't it? They make you think you can have them. They make you want them. And at the last minute, they say no. <laughs> what else are you going to be putting in the stew? The little teases, aren't they? They push yourself <laughs> out. Chicken. Chicken. That's right. Chicken. Now. You get a good, fresh chicken, like this lassie here. <laughs> and he wants a big one. Look at the breast on that, eh? <laughs> the breast on that. You want a chicken that looks at you in a certain way. As if it says, I've been around. I know the score. You want to... Oh! Right, uh, oh! What are you going to be doing with the chicken? Well, she's asking for it, so I'll be stuffing it. <laughs> Stuff in time. That'll do. Stuff in time. That'll do. Stuff it! That'll do. Cut. <laughs> Looking forward to the second half. Yes. Looking a bit grim there for us then for a moment, wasn't it? Yeah. But that equaliser, that really sorted us out. I think with, with that boost in the second half, we've got a good chance of hammering them. What a goal, hey? Just no one there, nobody there, and just nodded it in. It was disallowed, sorry. It was disallowed. He was offside. They can't do that. <laughs> so we're losing then, aren't we? Yep. Well, things to do. Nice to meet you. Um, soccer! <laughs> of course, it wasn't always like that. I, I, I used to support uh, Manchester United. But then you had to support them where I came from, in, um, in Hampstead. <laughs> and then I used to like Blackburn Rovers, and I'm thinking of giving Newcastle Athletic a try. <laughs> but no, no, I'm a true blue gonna <laughs> Bang! <laughs> I mean, it was the other side, but God, what a goal. Good goal, sir! Do I get pregnant? <laughs> This is Woomara Sheep Station in heart of northern Queensland. There's not much to do here in the evenings except drink tinnies and listen to the sound of the insects, which is how Grant Cooper here came up with his idea for an amazing adventure. It's an uh, invention. Pardon, mate? Invention. Oh, beg your pardon. Which is how Grant Cooper here came up with his idea for an amazing adventure. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there, Grant? Uh, well, he's a beetle. Right. He's got a fancy Latin name. Uh -huh. But the folks around here, they call him the Danny Beetle. And why's that? Well, they reckon he sounds like a bloke on the, uh... <laughs> oh, no, you'd better judge for yourself. Right. I'll take this flashlight here and shine it on the little fella. And, uh... <laughs> That's amazing! 
Yeah, you see, the little light, that arouses the fella, right? And he makes that sound by rubbing his little legs against the wing casing. That's crazy. <laughs> I was sitting out one night, listening to the little fella sound off, and I got to thinking, you know, each one of these little guys makes a slightly different sound. Right, OK. So, uh, I took some time out and, uh, <laughs> came up with this. <laughs> It's not really an adventure, it's more of an invention. <laughs> anyway, what does it do? Right, well, when I press these buttons here, the lights come on and the little dunnies, they sound off. Like this. <laughs> That's really great, mate. <laughs> Why don't you play us a tune? It'd be an absolute pleasure. And uh, what do you call them? I call them the Beatles. <laughs> oh, you're going to Turkey. Oh, you lucky thing. Oh, we've been to Turkey, myself and Roy. 1990 went to Turkey. 91, Turkey. 92, Turkey. 93, Markham. Oh, it's not a patch on Turkey, though, is it, Roy? Oh, I said it's not got the same atmosphere. What did I say, Roy? It's not got the same atmosphere. Well, last time, there were a trip to some ruins. I said, we've not travelled 2,000 miles to go and see a nice saw. Oh, they did laugh. What did they do, Roy? They did laugh. You see? Oh, and one night, Roy, tried his hand on the karaoke. I said, you've got a good voice, Roy, but no coordination. What did I say, Roy? I've got a good voice, but no coordination. <laughs> I mean, we're not big sun worshippers, myself and Roy. We're big fans of the shade. Oh, Roy come down in his shorts one day. I said, you look like an egg on legs. What did I say, Roy? I look like an egg on legs. <laughs> oh, they did laugh round the pool. Oh, but I got a really dicky tummy on the Wednesday. I said, oh, Roy, my tummy's off. What did I say, Roy? She said she could have shit through the eye of a needle. <laughs> used to watch it, but it's not as good as it used to be, is it? <laughs> so he jumps the bike over the car, falls off, and hits his head on the false rock. Yeah? Yeah, that's about the size of it, yeah. Sweet. Are you happy with the position of the rock, mate? Yeah, it'll say to be hanky-dory. Uh, obviously, I have to walk through it with Chip, you know, beforehand. Where is he? He's just behind us with Jamie. Oh, yeah. Chip, you want to talk through with Mike about the rock? Ride me back into the dock! <laughs> We took four cardboard tubes, the kind of tube you'd find in a regular brand of household toilet tissue, and then proceeded to place them on the floor, making four columns equidistantly thus. We wanted to test if these cardboard tubes would support the average body weight of a human man. No. <laughs> it's time now for a new regular feature of the series called Knowing Me, Alan Partridge, Knowing You, Another Alan Partridge, <laughs> in which I meet an ordinary member of the public who shares my name and is therefore entitled to membership of that exclusive club, Club Alan Partridge. <laughs> this week's Other Alan Partridge works on a Sea Link ferry. So, please welcome Petty Officer Alan Partridge. <laughs> Knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, Petty Officer Partridge. Aha. Aha. Now, Alan, you work on the Sea Link Ferry from Liverpool to Dublin, and uh, on, on, I imagine that that's the kind of job where there's an awful lot of camaraderie between the... Uh, between, between the is, that, is, is that the case? With the... <laughs> what, are you, what are you keeping doing that with your face for? Oh, it's a, it's a tick. I've got a facial tick. I'm sorry, I had absolutely oh. no idea. <laughs> That's all right, sorry. I've had it since I was a kid. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, 
Fine. Um, now, uh, Alan, Alan Partridge, I imagine your workmates uh, tease you and Josh with you, is that the case? Yeah, yeah, they call me TikTok. Why is that? Uh, because of me tick. No, God, no, no. I, no I, mean, I mean, do they tease you because your name's Alan Partridge? Oh, no, no. Right, I don't, I don't want to dwell on the tick. It doesn't bother me. What you choose to do with your face is, is, is your choice. Uh, it's fine, I like it. It suits you. It's good. No, no, there's again. Um, right, OK. Um, well, I'm going to present you with this now. It's the Alan Partridge tie and... Oh, that was a big one! Um, <laughs> The Alan Partridge tie and blazer badge combination pack. There, there we go. You, you take that. Thank then. you. Yeah, right. Uh, right. Hey, I'll put the tie on if I can keep my head still. Out. <laughs> <laughs> what a marvellous sense of humour. What, what, uh, uh, what a triumph for the human spirit. <laughs> uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Alan Partridge. Marvellous. Yeah, go on, go. 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 On, go. Right. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, go, go. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Jazz Club. Nice. <laughs> Tonight, dinner jazz. Mmm. <laughs> <Hello. laughs> We're very pleased to have on the show perhaps the most popular exponent of dinner jazz working in America. Stepney Green with his band, The New Headhunters. Great. It's not the original Headhunters lineup, of course. I mean, how could anyone really replace the late and legendary Charlie the Bulb Robeson? But the new drummer, Mint Green, under the tuition of his brother Soylent, is really quite good. And one day, he'll make a great jazz musician. Great. Really great. So, with a title track from his crazy nights and lazy days waxing, here's Stepney Green and the new, not quite as good as the old, Headhunters with Crazy Nights and Lazy Days. Crazy. Mm. Crazy nights. Yeah. And lazy days. You make me high. In so many ways Crazy nights and lazy days <laughs> <laughs> I just knocked it in, it was a fantastic goal, probably one of the best goals I've ever seen, but wait the linesman ruled it offside. <laughs> oh, yeah, listen, what is offside? Is that when the ball goes off at the side? <laughs> <laughs> off at the side? Off at the side? No, no, offside is, is well, it's offside. <laughs> Look, it's simple. Simple. Offside. Yeah. There has to be a defender between the... Uh, when the ball's kicked forward, there has to be a defender near the attacker and... and no, hang on. Um, when the ball's kicked forward, yeah. the linesman rules offside when the ball is struck behind the halfway line. That doesn't sound right. No, of course it doesn't sound right, because you're not listening properly. Look, it's simple. When the ball is kicked forward, there must be an attacker near the defender. <laughs> No, that, that, that's not right. <laughs> look, look, let me explain this to you in a way that you'll all understand, yeah? OK? There's the defender, there's the attacker, there's the goalie, and there's the ball. Now, he passes the ball I to me. I thought you knew all about football. I do! <laughs> when the ball is kicked forward, there must be an attacker between the defender. Between the defender? Between the defender? Yes, what? between, between. It's a well-known footballing phrase. Between? Yes! A footballing phrase? Yes! So what does it mean? Oh, God! It. You're not interested in football. God, you're so detached from reality. I'm going to clean my boots. <laughs> I love flying. I do, you know. Everywhere we go, I always try to fly. I mean, obviously not local places. I mean, me and Roy, we just get the bus, you know. <laughs> but whenever we go anywhere foreign, I say to Roy, we'll have to fly. What do I say, Roy? We'll have to fly. <laughs> See, Roy don't like flying. You know, I mean, he can't stomach it. He gets bilious. 
What do you get, Roy? Bilious. <laughs> no, I mean, if Roy had his way, he'd go everywhere on the Channel Tunnel. But what he doesn't like about planes, he doesn't like the small toilets on the planes. What don't you like, Roy? The small toilets. See, with him being on the big side, he likes a lot of room, toilet-wise, you know. Oh, one year, he ran the toilet from Gatwick to Magaluf. He missed out on the whole Pyrenees. You know, he was gutted. What were you, Roy? Relieved. Relieved and gutted, I think, Roy, you big shower of shit. 